Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Curl Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode I hope to try and launch this ghillie mission again. Last time I've discovered that having little vernier thrusters in the form of these twitch engines was not enough to keep it stable so this time I've added fins. It is a relatively cheap mission, well okay, the, the launcher is relatively cheap. The actual probe is really expensive because of all the scientific instruments and the fact that scientific instruments cost a whole lot. Uh, if we take a look, uh, you know, all of these things cost like 4000 5000 uh, the 2000 this one is 7500 So yeah, the instruments are really expensive, the launcher is not. So it's somewhat ironic that we're even concerned about recovering this booster, but I want to test if recovering the booster is possible. Now, in the previous, in point nine zero, it was possible to have this launcher with just the twitch engines being the vernier thrusters without putting fins. But that was point nine zero with the old aerodynamics. Now we have to have fins. Well, we'll see whether the fins work out or not. Uh, this is the main mission for today. Let's see if it works out. If it does, we get to fulfill the contract of uh, conducting or orbital survey of Gilly and. Probably lots and lots of science involved because of all the instruments that we have on it. So we'll be able to see what we can do with all of that. Okay, let's hope th that we are still within the transfer time frame for EVE because we did do other activities in the meanwhile last time and the planets have moved. Ah, uh, I, I now remember that we don't have enough electric charge on the probe, so hold on, let me quickly recover this and add some more electric charge. I remember that now, seeing how much electric charge we had up there. The only electric charge we really have is on the recoverable portion, uh, just in case we need to control it for some reason, and we did not have enough on the probe itself. I'll probably not time warp to launch at daylight because we want to get on with it as quickly as possible. Otherwise, the alignment of the planets will be even worse than it is right now. Okay, I think we are better off now. And batteries, of course, don't weigh very much, so it shouldn't change anything fundamental. So again, I'm taking a special interest in the resources we might find on Gilly and Ike, because those are two places that would be good to have operations on. And I'm going to ignite the engines at the same time as the clamps. Okay, let's hope that this remains stable. Here we go. Much power. Smart ASS time. It's a bit wiggly. A lot wiggly. Man. Hold on. Ah, 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 oh, okay. I'll, I'll just manually control it. It's alright. It's alright. <sighs> yeah, Smart ASS was doing a lot of oscillations. Even SAS is doing some oscillations. Uh, the control surfaces are too much for it, I guess. But, no flipping this time, anyway. Still not the trajectory I was looking for. We really, really need to flatten out now. We're gonna have to brave a flip, but uh, it's not likely to flip at this altitude, but you never know. Well, and we're also braving some heating. Okay, here we go. Set. And ignition. Okay, we'll have to see whether that portion is recoverable or not. I just slapped the fins on without checking whether the parachutes could handle it. Okay, fairing set. Okay, so let's try and make orbit here. This is just a LV-909, Terrier engine. We are with a very high apoapsis, so maybe we should just cut it there and coast a bit. Orbital velocity at 157 kilometers I don't recall off the top of my head but obviously it's less than the 2300 we're used to at lower altitudes. Okay, shut down. Still no message about the recovery of the booster. 
probably hasn't made it down yet. Okay, so plotting for Eve. Okay, it's pretty good on the timing actually. Uh, we have a preliminary approach. Actually, we might have been able to just keep burning out instead of stopping the engine at all. But 1024.6, you can see that our trajectory is very much in line with our current trajectory, you know, with the Earth, uh, with the with Kerbin. Uh, we do have to make a mid-course adjustment there. It costs 373 meters per second. That's because we are not at the ascending or descending node. In fact, the ascending node's right there. Oh, sorry, the descending node's right there. So that tells you that there's no way we could have done the correction here. And uh, right now we only have a very weak Eve encounter, but we can adjust that as we go along. Um, interesting that Kerbal has a little purple dot in the middle of it. It has its own little Eve in the center, I don't know why. Okay, a weird visual effect, but that is not a major consideration right now. Let us make sure before we make this transfer that our instruments are working. We don't want to toggle the materials bay. Uh, orbital telescope, uh, we can toggle the shutter. Bring it out. Okay, we want to make sure none of the instruments bump into each other. I don't know if... Yeah, we've already done it around Kerbin. Yeah, we, we've probably done all these things around Kerbin. Uh, maybe not the, the... This one. The multi-spectral multi imaging platform. Yeah, we haven't done this around Kerbin. Transmit that data. We're not going to do the full scan, though. Okay, we got a little bit of data. This stage is almost out. And then we are on to the rear guard stage. Unfortunately, this will be debris hanging around Kerbin after this. Okay, rear guard stage is active. Plenty of Delta V here, as you can see. Battery is recharging, and of course, once we get closer to EVE, it'll be even better off as far as the solar power is concerned. And now, after we make this burn, we can replot everything and get really close to EVE. Well, not really close to... well, it might help to get really close to EVE, but we'll see exactly what the best situation is to get to Gilly. We'll do that. So let me do some plotting to figure that out. Alright, well I've worked some maneuver node magic here. And mid-course plane change 374.2. And then as we approach, right when we touch the orbit of Gilly, we make this maneuver, which is a complicated one involving a lot of prograde, a lot of radial, and a little bit of normal. And that will give us a gilly periapsis of 61 kilometers in theory. Now of course it's touchy because gilly is tiny, but you can see that once we get there our orbit will not be very different from the orbit of gilly, so the correction uh, to get into orbit around gilly will be minor. Uh, and so the maneuver is 172 days, then we're going to have to go all the way around Eve and then meet up with gilly on the next orbit and I mean, it doesn't seem like we should even need to, huh? But, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Because, I mean, uh, the orbital period of this orbit seems to, it would be very similar to the orbital period of Gilly itself. So why can't we just hit Gilly immediately? Anyway, I, I think I should just take what I've got here and not complain. Okay, so we've got a mid-course adjustment in three uh, in 106 days, 374 meters per second, and we are on our way. Yes, we are departing Kerbin, our little probe here, all ready to go. Now, let's see if we recover the booster. This, I don't know what this is. This is the booster. Uh, the stage value was 12,500, total refunds. 9,800. Terminal velocity 4.4 is fine. 
And yeah, we got the procedural SRB back. Everything seems to be in order there. Okay, so that was successful. Though, again, Smart ASS had trouble controlling it. Now, since we've got uh, such a long wait to the mid-course adjustment, it's reasonable to take a look at the situation for our Kerbals. Uh, the Pioneer base says electric charge is expired, but I expect that's just because it's in the nighttime side and it'll recharge in daylight. But our supplies for Minmus Station do not seem to be enough to hold out through the whole time. So that's a bit of a problem. Besides that, we should take a look at our contracts to see if maybe there's something else we need to do. Now, we do have that one mission where we have to do some science and Minmus Station and bring it back. But that doesn't have a expiry on it, so that's okay. Ah, well, there's this Launch Ike space station. Hmm, trivial prestige, but wants a solar panel generators. Oh, uh, one of the following power generators. Any of those will do. Have a science lab cupola. Gives us a lot of funds. Needs to support four Kerbals, which is just uh. Hitchhiker storage container will take care of that. And of course docking. At least one part, okay. Uh, yeah, I think we can definitely say that we want to do that. Now we're at our limit on contracts, so we have to fulfill some of this. Uh, this contract will be fulfilled once the probe that's currently in orbit around Ike uh, stays there for another 157 days, so that's got to take a little bit of time. We could deliver ore from the moon. We could rescue rescue the shell well Kerman. And then it's just uh, Gilly and then explore Ike. We need to land on Ike. I don't know if the probe that we already have around there can land on it. We can uh, take a look at that. But it looks like we have to resupply Minma Station. Let's take a look at Minma Station and see what's going on there. I mean, I guess the problem with it is, is it's a really crappy station because it was our first station and it's not particularly well built or well supplied. It's got bad docking ports. It's got the tiny little docking ports is all. Sort of a Skylab sort of thing. Um, it's not as permanent as a real station ought to be. Maybe maybe I need to make a real space station and have these two transfer over to it now. Uh, but it'd be sad to just let all this go. But we've had some trouble actually slapping on a solar, uh, new docking port on it. Not solar panels, the docking ports are the problem. So that's an issue. On the other hand, we could separate off this lander and then just add another docking module to it that and maybe uh, something with some extra supplies as well that would work do we have a uh, life support on on here I mean it looks like this one has life support on it says stop life support so yeah okay maybe maybe that's a thing but then that module will have to be attached with this tiny docking port which is annoying but at least it means that we don't have to completely abandon this. Let me get to work on that. We do have the time. Alright, so this is what I've built. We've got a junior docking port on top. We've got uh, two juniors on the side. A regular Clampatron docking port there and on the other side as well. And then a regular on the bottom. That way it's not a junior docking port at the bottom which might make it structurally unsound on the top of this rocket. And so our lander will actually attach to one side of this instead of in line with the rest of it. And of course this will attach to the rest of the station. Uh, we have solar panels, we have power, uh, we have an uh, inline stabilizer. You know what? We need, we need RCS, don't we? Uh, otherwise how can we dock this? Come on. Actually, uh, the game had crashed when I made one iteration of it where I did have RCS. It's just that uh, I did not manage to save it in time, so I had to rebuild the whole thing. And, yep, yeah, so more RCS, and we will get many RCS thrusters. As you can see, I've got twitch thrusters on this, just because they were the easiest to figure out a place for. And basically, I want these RCS thrusters. Uh, I don't want to 
it would be natural to put them in the center here, but I would like them to be offset so that they don't blast anything that's trying to dock. That's just for aesthetics. Okay, so that is settled. All right, so we've got that, and then we have a dual poodle stage here, and then this is the Ithaca rocket, which, if you remember, has the floats and all. Uh, I'll just be allowing stage recovery to handle the recovery of it, and that should be fine. So there we go, that is our rocket for you. It's an expensive mission, as you can see, to Minmus, but we should have enough Delta V and all the things that we need to make it successful. Um, except for fins. We have a lot of gimbling. I don't know... Should we just put fin... Well, I mean, we tested this without fins. We should just go without fins. We do have all that gimbling. Should be alright, right? Right. Okay, let's try it. Alrighty, here it is. We've got plenty of supplies, of course. That's part of what we were trying to bring there. Throw up, SAS is on and engage rocket is ascending now there are no fins to wiggle about so maybe smarty ss can handle this hopefully let's see okay bring it uh, smoothly down here Looking good so far. Nice view of the moon back there. Yeah, as far as rockets around Kerbin go, this is a mighty fine one. Okay, set. And ignition. Oops, blew up something or another. Hope it wasn't uh, critical. Fairings. And zero out the pitch. And let's hope we do get a recovery there. I think we can coast to Apoapsis for a bit. Okay, we have a Periapsis and... That's good enough. Shut down 140 by 84. Let's get over to Minmus now. Okay, let us do this node. This is a transfer to Minmus 908.5 meters per second. And it's a very rough approach to Minmus right now. Uh, it'll take 13 days, which we have time for, of course. And we still have to rendezvous with the station, but we've got plenty of Delta V to make that happen, so not worried about that. All right, let's go. Okay, that's fine. Ah, a little bit too much though. As usual, I'm trying sort of an off-plane transfer. I'm not really hitting it at the sending node though, which is why we are so far away from it. But that'll give me an opportunity to adjust for the rendezvous to the station, so... Let's, ju let's just go with that for now. I've got a lot of Delta V to work with. I'm not afraid to use it. There's the ghillie probe going out, by the way. Okay, we have entered Minmus SOI. Obviously an inclination issue here. Let's adjust. Using our oodles of Delta V. And uh, we don't want to target Spore 2, though. We'll have some adjusting to do. Let's just get closer first. Oh, uh, what happened with our launch stage? Very important. Okay, uh, it was a 91,000 fun stage. Our total refunds were 61,000 because it was recovered 502 kilometers away from the KSC. So only two-thirds recovered, recovered value. And, but we got everything back, including the five skippers, so that's good. Could have been worse. Our approach is not too bad compared to the station. We could probably get a little bit closer, huh? Or not? There we go. Yeah, 
Yep, that's fine. Oh, uh, I think we're going around backwards. We're f ah, shoot. We're going around the opposite direction. Okay, continuing this. We'll go around to the other side. This is the easiest way to correct that little mistake. Okay, now we don't have the 165 degree relative inclination. Add maneuver. All right, I'll just take that for now, maybe. Let me try and flatten it out a little bit. Well, I don't want this this stage to come in that close, actually. Hmm. Can we contrive to have a negative periapsis for it so it gets dumped onto the surface? That's probably a better idea. And then we'll lift the other portion up using its own engines. Okay, so this stage is gonna deorbit. Separation. Now, back to the target. We would like to correct the increasing issue with the target. And that's pretty close right there. We could go a little bit closer. Okay. Now, while this is going in, well, we'll get into render range of the station, and then we have to pull the lander off so this has a place to dock. Undock. Still has mob propellants. Good. That's really plenty of space. Let's set that as target for now. Alright, I'll just leave it like that for now. Oh, uh, the lander is designated minimum station. We really want this part, this portion. Not the lander. Once again, I will note how wonderfully easy docking in stock is. But let's also retract the solar panels, just in case that they bump into anything. They will, probably won't, but you never know. There we go, and docked. Right, now the other thing. The lander. And magnetism. Alright, everything is nicely assembled. The food situation is confirmed fine. Let me take a peek at Pioneer Base. Okay, taking a look at... Well, see, Electric Charge just recharged after I visited it. Now it looks like they have 20 days, which is the same as Minmus Station. But it was indicating that they didn't have any power until I decided to arrive here and check it out. So they're alright, they're alright. It was just messing with me. And they're growing food and everything. Supplies are good. Um, not much fertilizer, and not much of anything else. We'll have to work on that. Okay, let's follow the ghillie probe and see what we can do with it. Alright, we are now approaching the mid-course adjustment for the ghillie probe. I decided to time warp through it. And... As you can see, I made sure our, our minimalist solar panels were sort of pointed at the sun. Actually, uh, having it on the si uh, uh, sideways you know, let's say uh, having this side face the sun would have been just fine too. The only thing we don't want is the tail facing the sun would be a bad situation. I don't know if we've done all the instruments around the sun, that one we have. We're keeping the goo containers. I can't seem to click on the RPWS. I know we've done the orbital telescope. This we may not have. Yeah, 16 signs for the multi-spectral analysis. Can transmit that. Okay, but let's do the burn. We do want to be reasonably precise about this because of the other maneuver which will actually get us an encounter with Gilly. 
but we could probably finagle it and uh, figure it out even if this was a little bit off. Okay, 0 0.1 meters per second. Okay, that's a, a tail first posture that we don't want. There we go. Obviously touchy, but yep, we can get a Gillian counter still. So let's head into Eve SOI. See, Gilly's coming around. We're, we're actually. Well, it was pretty far off, actually. Not so easy to get an encounter when it's that far ahead of us. We are already in Eve SOI, so we can do instruments. Slog magnetometer, that's 25 science. Hopefully, we have enough electric charge to. Yeah, we, uh, we just finished transmitting it. Okay, RPWS, 45 science. Done. Orbital telescope. 30 science. Uh, well, let's see. I don't know how much electric charge each of these actually takes. That could be interesting information for them to provide us. And I'll hold off on the multispectral imaging for now. That's. Uh, it's not recharging. You see, we're tail to the sun, basically. Now we will want a polar orbit around Gilly so we can scan it properly. We do have the carbonite detector. There we go. Okay, Gilly encounter confirmed. Now let's turn towards the sun. Recharge. And then we'll do the other experiments high over Eve. Not that they're paying us for it. Oh, uh, just log imaging data. Okay, transmit. We'll save the goo containers for Gilly. So I think it's just the thermometer and barometer. Log pressure data. 30. 30 points for this. I don't know why recovery is more, but okay. Logging temperature data. 20. Two hours to encounter, one hour to encounter, well, to closest approach, I should say. There we go. And it shouldn't take too much to get into orbit. There we go. Not even 100 meters per second. Let's keep it high because otherwise we hit the time uh, the time warp restrictions but we'll have to see what the instruments are willing to accept oh we finished the magnetic field uh, survey around Ike we maintained a proper orbit for enough time okay we are in orbit around here a little bit lower okay um, so how is our supply situation? Oh, only 23 days of supplies at Pioneer Base. So probably the first thing I'm going to be doing in the next episode is resupplying there. And electric charge is an issue everywhere all the time. Okay. Otherwise, they, they're all right with their habitat for 45 days. But I should probably bring them back or something. They were just to test habitat so that we would know what we needed to do to launch a similar thing to other planets. Okay, multi-spectral analysis from... Okay, let's turn the probe towards the sun again. Let's just do all the sciences and keep an eye on the electric charge and then see what else it needs. I won't start the carbonite scan until we finish doing all the sciences. Okay, log. Transmit that one. Let's do the materials bay since it's not sticking out and otherwise I might forget. Okay, 45 science only. We really should recover that, but let's go for it. Yep, transmit. Good for it to give us a warning about that though. That it is inoperable after used. Okay, orbital telescope. 
Okay, magnetometer. Imaging data. And I'm going to start multispectral scan and mineral scan. And it says suboptimal altitude. It might be able to handle it anyway. Oh, it takes a lot of electric charge, though. We don't have enough electric charge to do both of these. I think, uh, well, let me see how much the car. Uh, we'll, we'll prioritize the carbonite scan. Okay, I think we've already done the RPWS. Materials base done. So just thermometer and barometer now. Oh, and goo container. Um, oh, we need another mystery goo low over. Oh, darn, the material study was supposed to be low. Ah. Dang it, the material study was supposed to be low. <sighs> That's just stupid. I mean, not stupid of them, stupid of me for not noticing that. Okay, well, let's get the mystery goo. I, I guess it doesn't say five out of six or anything. So I guess uh, missing that, we're going to fail this. At least we're going to have to send another probe to do it. I assume we got some funds for each of the points and of course we got science so it's not bad or anything it's just uh, I should have been able to fill everything okay well that's definitely gonna oh low over Gilly is really low huh okay electric charge issues we're probably on the no it's just tail on to it okay well, let's quickly do this adjustment I said quickly do this adjustment. Well, that brings us below six kilometers. And we are recharging. Okay. Great. We are now under the most restrictive bit of it. We are forced into physical time warp under eight kilometers. Because Gilly. Okay. That's in space near Gilly. We will transmit that. That should satisfy that. Oh wait, uh, okay, uh, so yeah. The mystery goo, see we got a little bit of funds for each of those, but we couldn't fulfill the complete contract because of that one clause for the material study and I accidentally did the material study high instead of low. Uh, oh well. But otherwise, uh, rousing success and next time we will have to take a look at the Pioneer Base situation. We will need to examine that probe around Ike to see whether we can land it and thereby fulfill the Explore Ike contract as well. But at least we fulfilled the, the survey of the magnetic field environment. That's good. And on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.